everyone. Uh, today I would like to introduce to you uh, Masa san. Masa is the CEO of Asia Corporation, the company behind Japan's number one hybrid app development tools, Moraka and Onsen UI. He started his company as a pioneer in web and mobile communities in Japan, writing numerous PHP books and initiating Cordova meetups. Masa still maintains a leadership role within mobile and HTML5 communities in Japan and overseas as a hybrid app development vanguard and framework print setup. So I'll hand over the mic to Masa. Okay, thanks so much for the introduction. Um, okay, um, so, um, well, um, good evening. I mean, maybe uh, it's going to be dark and I think you guys are waiting for beers to drink, but uh, please be patient for maybe another 45 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, the state of our mobile web and hybrid apps application just in general. Uh, maybe I'm going to go some overview of you know what what are the hybrid applications, what are the mobile applications, and what's the what 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 what's challenging, what's the benefit, what's the opportunity, and kind of so forth. Um, so uh, hello again. My name is Masa Tanaka. Um, I'm a CEO and founder of HR Corporation. Actually, um, this company has been around for 15 years uh, since I created this company during my university uh, undergraduate. So kind of long term. It's not a startup actually. It's more like a small and mid-sized company. We have around 55 employees, um, including actually many from uh, overseas. Um, so we are located in Tokyo, but we also have a, a little subsidiary in San Francisco. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, uh, just um, find my Twitter account at Masi or uh, GitHub at Masahiro Tanaka. So let's get started. So um, today's topic is about developing mobile applications or maybe HTML5 in general. Um, so uh, just just as a background story, um, uh, I just I, I just wanted to know like how many people are actually developing for mobile applications these days. Uh, Please raise your hand. Okay, so pretty much. Okay, good. So, well, obviously, um, you guys are very, uh, you know, uh, talented because right now, you know, there are lots of lots of uh, application demands uh, for developing mobile applications. But uh, suppliers, which means you guys, developers, you know, are demanding these days, right? Uh, and, and the reason why you know there are abundant uh, require you know uh, needs for developing mobile applications is because uh, not only B two C like business to consumer applications like you can get from Apple uh, Apple uh, Apple App Store or Google Play Store uh, there are also uh, emerging market which is called B two B or B two E which is which stands for business to business applications or business to enterprise applications and now all those enterprise and corporate companies are are looking for the talents to develop mobile applications uh, not for the consumer but also for to, to drive their business needs uh, and and at the same time uh, the multiple you know uh, we need to support multiple target platforms in those cases in more cost efficient way uh, because uh, if, if we assume for like, uh, developing a mobile application that for like uh, that's doing some like time management application. That is pretty typical in Japanese company to do, you know, to do the shooting card and then you know have have some stamp uh, when, when we leave the company, right? So so many companies want to have that application uh, mobile already, uh, but uh, but many companies also uh, provide BYOD, which means you know bring your own device. So so we can so the company can't really uh, force the users to speak to 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 use specific platform like iPhone or Android, so they need to target to multiple platforms in a cost-efficient cost way. Um, so this kind of shift from commer commercial to business is just one phenomenon why, why there are so many demands for mobile applications, but this, this phenomenon it, it will increase and this will be going to be you know, very significant uh, opportunity uh, for, for the developers who wants to, you know, who can quickly develop mobile applications uh, in an efficient way. And the real solution for this is, of course, HTML5, as in this, uh, this topic this time. Because why HTML5 is important is because uh, this is evergreen technology, right? Um, I, I can't imagine why HTML5 will dead in future. Maybe, maybe it's going to be HTML5.6 or HTML5.7, but uh, just in general, like web technologies want to seize, right? Uh, this is truly open platform. Uh, this is eternal, right? Uh, all the browsers will render uh, the same 
HTML, which is like made like 1995, uh, when you know may, maybe when Yahoo was first introduced. Right? So this is evergreen, which is so important for for you know for for, te for choosing the technology. And moreover than that, uh, HTML5 is very progressive, which means it's it's still like continuing to evolve, uh, to increase uh, its capabilities, and and along with it, it's totally cost aware, as I mentioned. You know, uh, many browsers will draw, uh, will, will render most of the websites as uh, as compatible as possible uh, throughout the ages. And that's something like Google or Apple, uh, like WebKit team is, you know, spending so much effort to, to test on their mobile browser engine to keep their backward compatibility. And of course, it's cross-platform. So HTML5 is a different choice for us to, uh, if, if we would like to adapt uh, technology to, to have long-term, you know, long, uh, long, long, like how do I say, future-minded uh, and progressive and evergreen um, development platform. But actually, uh, maybe most of you guys are actually are aware of this, but uh, if we compare HTML5 and real native mobile applications, uh, there are some, you know, may maybe some of the some of the people here already have uh, experienced some uh, barrier uh, to to compete with native mobile applications, and that's what uh, we also have in my. Uh, we also had the same experience like, uh, when we started uh, doing this journey back in 2010 when we first tried to develop a mobile application that's completely run on HTML5, and. Not only the performance, but also like the capability of HTML5 was, uh, you know, was significantly lower than what, what it was uh, providing through native APIs. Like offline support, or maybe uh, native features like access to uh, native features or operating system APIs. Those are uh, the major drawbacks of using HTML5. And. Uh, and just uh, just uh, quickly talking about how, how it's it's going these days is that uh, now there's a there is a phenomenon called uh, there is a new term called progressive web apps, uh, which Google has been introduced this in uh, Chrome Dev Summit like two years ago. Uh, I'm actually, I was attending to uh, prog uh, Google uh, Chrome Summit last week, so actually I flew back to from San Francisco just now, but. Uh, well, they're, well they're, they're speaking about progressive web apps all the time uh, because this is the Google's way to introduce how to integrate how web application will behave similar uh, kind of set as native mobile applications. So what progressive web app does, uh, this is not a technical specification. This is just a, like a keyword for making mobile web application behave more like native application. And the underlying technology of making this PWA possible is like offline support or receiving push notifications or install to home screen. So that the user you know, who's, who, who's, who's, uh, who's exper experiencing major drawbacks from native application can somewhat uh, survive from adapting these progressive web applications. Um, I, I won't go so far details on you know the, the every single source code here, but uh, the key component is called Service Worker, which is like a background JavaScript execution engine running on Chrome uh, all the time. So if you use Service Worker, you can install your application uh, written in JavaScript onto your Chrome, and that Service Worker will uh, will keep you know alive even without even when your your website are not uh, not being displayed on the browser, so that's why uh, you could you could like manipulate the browser uh, requests and responses so that it can provide more caching mechanism, or or you can you can create application web app manifest to install to your home screen. Or you can even receive push notifications via Google's Firebase crowd messaging, and and also this this is almost done by Service Worker itself. So 
this, uh, these enhancements, I mean, I will say enhancements from uh, standard HTML5 because these are, these are something beyond what uh, HTML5 has been, uh, uh, has been uh, made in spe specification are called living standards. Um, so another, like, so some of the uh, another useful sets of living standards are like web MIDI, which you can connect to a MIDI device, like key, like you know the music keyboards or maybe uh, guitars or uh, synthesizers. Uh, that's called web MIDI. And there's even like a web USB. Maybe um, some of you have heard of this. Uh, so you can now uh, send commands via USB to uh, IoT device from a web browser. Uh, that's kind of insane, but uh, uh, those are actually happening these days. And with Bluetooth and video tracks. So there, there are many um, add-on add specifications that browser is now, uh, it has, has, has now been shipped. Uh, but problem is that they're actually not really cross-platform. So just talking about web MIDI, uh, you will see if all green are only Chrome and Opera, and Opera is because uh, Opera is also using the same Blink engine as Chrome, so that's why they're pretty much identical. And no other browsers are, have, have been adopting these specifications. And same as web USB, and same as web Bluetooth, and same as video tracks. And this, this case, it is a little bit uh, interesting because this, this only has been adopted by Safari and iOS Safari, but not on Google Chrome. So, so there are so many um, specifications that are out there which are not cross-platform, which still produces you know, a big barrier when we want to develop a web application or HTML5 driven application that's totally competitive with natives. And here comes the solution. Uh, one solution might be Apache Cordova. Maybe uh, some of you guys heard, have heard of this. And we are actually long time committed to Apache Cordova. This has been uh, around for uh, back in like 2010 uh, when it was formally named as PhoneGap. And Adobe acquired uh, the, the company called Nitobi, which was a uh, first author of PhoneGap, and then they turned their name to Cordova. PhoneGap is still being turned around uh, by the product name of Adobe. And this is still very popular. Uh, this survey was like held like one and a half years ago, um, and pretty much uh, in major categories, um, PhoneGap and Cordova has been adopted still. Uh, I will say roughly 10% of the uh, mobile applications that's distributed through Play Stores are actually uh, based on Cordova, and more B2B and B2C, B2E applications uh, have usage of Apache Cordova because of the cap because of the capability of uh, delivering cross-platform. And this is how um, this is how the Cordova pyramid works. So. You have your native code, but you don't really have to take take care of this because uh, on top of native code, there's a Cordova layer which has Cordova plugins, and you can write your code. So all you need to do is write HTML5, and what we say Cordova plugins. So this is going to be the polyfill that accesses uh, via native bridge to call some APIs that are not uh, that are not present in WebView. But still, you can uh, you can like supplement those APIs by uh, using Cordova plugins. So that's why when you use Cordova, uh, almost all the uh, native APIs are available uh, through the form of Cordova plugins. And that's why there are so many uh, eco there is a huge ecosystem of Cordova out there. Um, more than two thousand five hundred third party plugins can be found via NPM registry. And of course you can make your own plugin, but uh, more likely you can just find a uh, search for uh, like maybe web USB or web MIDI and you could find some uh, Cordova plugins that supplements um, you know, iOS, you know, that, that lacks in iOS and Android. But here's a problem, uh, the performance. Uh, because the capability has been, uh, has been um, reached to a certain point, Still, uh, the performance uh, had been a major issue. Uh, and this is a uh, this is a story from 2012. Maybe uh, this was five years ago. So, um, so maybe uh, some of uh, some of the some of the attendees here uh, already forgot about this story. But uh, uh, five years ago, there was no Facebook native applications, right? 
uh, of course we'll be using Facebook and Messenger applications every day, but back in 2002, Facebook was heavily committed on HTML5. That's why they only provide their mobile version of Facebook by a web browser. And uh, Zuckerberg was, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg was uh, admitted, uh, you know, said that uh, he was, he, he had a wrong decision about it, but uh, now and then they transitioned from uh, HTML5 to native because HTML5 was not capable enough and not, not performant enough. But actually, things have been changed from these days, like from five years ago, uh, especially the performance. Uh, there are so many major browser improvements, and also, of course, you know, CPU and GPU speed has been drastically improved. And I'm, I'm going to just uh, some, you know just point out some of the improvements that's been done from the from from five years ago was like WebAssembly, which is a, which is an API that you can write. JavaScript code, uh, uh, sorry, you, you can write uh, your code in C or maybe uh, C++ or maybe C Sharp and then compile it to WebAssembly format so that CPU will execute it in native level, not like how JavaScript is interpreting its language. So if, so, and also WebWalkers, which is like a, a which is not a service worker. Wave worker is something like you can have different thread for executing JavaScript in a different uh, in a different thread. Which means you can have the parallel multi multi thread programming is using JavaScript. And uh, also the enhancements to uh, rendering has been made as well. Like CSS3 recently uh, has shipped with wheel change property, which you can you can specify. Uh, to the browser that hey this will going to be changed in future so please keep this in a GPU so that it will render more smoother than the than than put than doing the rendering in GPU or uh, there's a now new callback called request idle callback which which you can just say you know hey browser please call me call this function when you are going to be idle so that uh, I'm going to do some you know long heavy stuff when it is called. So those are some major you know, improvements to the browser level as well. And, and luckily speaking, uh, this WebAssembly was uh, formally, it was only adapted to uh, Firefox and Chrome. And uh, you see this, uh, now from iOS 11, uh, they, they have been adapted to uh, WebKit. So now you can use WebAssembly in mobile platforms you, you know, throughout them throughout the cross-platform, uh, which I hope will going to be uh, you know, drastic improvements of uh, JavaScript frameworks and JavaScript runtime to, to gain more performance. So I, 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 will, I will see uh, many frameworks like React or maybe Angular, which partly will, re will rely in WebAssembly to gain its performance, and it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's going to, be the, um, to the killer uh, functions if you want to gain your performance. And uh, and just to speak uh, for CPU performance, uh, I'm just uh, showing this uh, benchmark to just mention that uh, it's already performant. Like recent iOS iPhone 8 has uh, this is a SunSpider benchmark which benchmarks uh, JavaScript executions, and you will see 155, uh, which is almost around over here, uh, which is like Core i5 or Core i7 of uh, of a CPU that's made like one or two years ago. So. This machine also, and iPhone 8 is almost identical in terms of performance. Um, and especially JavaScript is single threaded. Uh, it don't really, you know, even, even the iPhone 8 have like four cores, it, it don't really have the mean the drawback of the execution runtime uh, compared to eight core CPUs because uh, most JavaScript don't really have, you know, have, have make use of threads except using WebWalker. So when, when CPU and GPU speeds are uh, fulfilled, what's the next challenge? It's obviously user interface and user experience. And so I'm going to talk about this a little bit. But there are so many, uh, there, there are a couple of mobile SPA frameworks out there, like jQuery, Ionic, and Onsen UI. Uh, I'm going to talk about why these are needed first. So this is something, um, so on the left-hand side, this is the development stack that you will like. 
you would use for developing native applications. Uh, there's operating system and of course iOS and Android, uh, both of course differently, but producing uh, what, we, what they call native SDKs, uh, like iOS Cocoa Touch or Android's Android framework. And your logic sits here, uh, which means all the UI components or, or the components that, uh, that generate user experience are actually relying on these native SDKs. But on the other hand, on the web HTML5 world, uh, of course, there is WebView, and of course, there, is a, there are frameworks that you would like to use, like, like Vue.js or React or Angular. But there is a huge gap between the framework and your logic, and what, what's missing here is a, is a way to, component, to compose your application uh, in a beautiful way, uh, in a native application manner. And that's what um, we do as a project called Onsen UI. So this is a UI framework that, that's uh, designed for mobile, especially for mobile applications. And the benefit of using Onsen UI is that you can instantly get iOS and Android uh, native-like components by just uh, loading this library. And so this is a hundred open source software uh, that's made uh, hundred percent made in Japan, but actually hundred percent made made uh, by non-Japanese people. <laughs> and, uh, this is uh, pretty much fine tuned for uh, mobile Safari in Chrome. Um, um, of course, you guys know about well, you know what Onsen is, right? Uh, so Onsen, you know, uh, refers to SPA uh, single page applications. That's, so that's why we named Onsen UI uh, as a library for delivering mobile single page application experience. And here's some uh, quick demo of uh, Onsen UI. Um, I, I should actually have demoed on, on my mobile phone because uh, you will you will be pretty impressed that uh, this. Uh, the performance won't, you know, uh, is, is still very performant when running on Android devices. But uh, we have uh, lots of features of uh, in Onsen UI, so I cannot introduce everything. We have more than 15 components actually, so uh, almost all the components that you will be required to compose your native, uh, to, to compose your mobile applications will be supplied by Onsen UI. And we are, we are making many techniques, we are, we are adapting many techniques to improve performance, uh, like lazy DOM manipulation and hardware GPU escalation. I don't want to uh, talk details into it, but uh, just, in, just to cover all the overview, like we have a component called uh, lazy repeat, which means you can provide unlimited uh, scrolling uh, through HTML5, which is kind of tricky. And how we are doing with that, uh, when, when user scrolls uh, a, a li long list of uh, long list views, uh, we will we will load those DOM uh, when it's about to render, and then when it's hide off the screen, then I'm going to uh, we are going to uh, unload the, unload those so that it won't it won't um, it won't it won't take into uh, account for uh, for browser calculations. The same technique actually it is the same technique as. Um, uh, using iOS list view, uh, but we're just adapting it in a HTML5 way. Uh, so these techniques are a little bit difficult to for for even for uh, for professional JavaScript developers to just invent themselves uh, just just for this. And also UI is also made of web components. Um, maybe. It's some are not familiar with web components. This is um, this is one of the latest HTML5 specification that allows everybody, like designers to or developers, to define their own tags. Of course, HTML5 has equipped with standard tags like p tag, span tag, div tag, image tag. But with web components, you can now define your own tag, and you can also equip JavaScript tag into it so that you can instruct. Uh, Java browser, what to do when the user uses that tag? So for for Onsen UI, we are heavily using web components. So all the components are actually tags, like uh, toolbar tag, tab tab bar tag, navigator tab, button tag. You know, everything are tags. And on top of that, we have framework bindings to support various frameworks. So that said, 
what one thing I can do is this is truly framework agnostic because this is just simple JavaScript, plain JavaScript layer uh, that's between that, that, that's going to be between you know your your source code and the framework. So we we not only support you know vanilla J JavaScript, we also support Angular, React, Vue.js, J of course jQuery, or you know or literally all the frameworks that that just you know just just out there. And this is the beauty of using web components. But still, uh, Onsen UI. So there are so many users actually uh, using Onsen UI to de to deploy their mobile applications or mobile websites. But still. If you need more performance, there is a way to go beyond HTML5. And that's React Native, right? So React Native is not actually HTML5, so that's why I'm not going to talk about this so much, but the left-hand side is a standard hybrid application, Cordova approach. Uh, there's native code, there's Cordova, Cordova plugins, as you've seen before, and there is a web view that renders this JavaScript in HTML5. So, also, UI will become a JavaScript library that sits on here that draws components that outputs to WebView. On the other hand, if you go with React Native, the structure will become completely different because you have the same set of native code and there's a React Native framework. And this React Native framework is run on JavaScript core, uh, which is not a browser, which is just a JavaScript engine like Node.js running on your phone. And that will, that will interpret JavaScript. And of course, this is React, so you will use JSX for writing the components. And those components will be translated into native UI, not a browser DOM elements. So that said, React Native has different, totally different, uh, different structure, but still using JavaScript. But React Native can, can actually have potential to increase performance uh, when, it when it comes to the native UI uh, drawings. So, as I said, Onsen UI and React Native, those two are uh, pretty promising. Uh, I will say uh, Cordova and React Native are two major um, approach to develop mobile applications using HTML5 or web technologies. Um, I'm, I'm going to shift a little bit a different gear and talk about the tooling part. Uh, in case I don't, okay, I have eight more minutes. Um, so for the tooling, uh, maybe maybe uh, some of you guys wonder because open uh, Onsen UI is uh, truly open source. Uh, how how are we making business from here? Uh, the the, I, the, uh, the the answer to that is because uh, we are providing also providing mobile development platform called Monica. So because why we created this is because there, there are a couple of uh, headaches, especially when, you want, when we want to target to cross-platform mobile application development. You, we need to manage SDK versions precisely. Uh, every time like I, 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 uh, Apple ships new iPhone or iOS, uh, the Xcode version has been needs to be bumped up and you need to like download maybe giga, gigabytes of you know, SDKs and you need to you know, totally install from fresh, or you need to test on uh, multiple devices. Um, it's saying like if you want to create cross-platform applications, you need, to is, you need to test on both iOS and Android. And traditionally, if you go with native, of course, you know, Android, application, Android device has been connected to, uh, from, from Android Studio, and iOS application is connected from Xcode which means you need to you know, run two mobile, uh, two IDEs and connect to two different devices and you need to synchronize each other. Uh, that's kind of tedious. And of course, you know, uh, as, a, as a big enterprise company, uh, they hope to have a unified development platform so that uh, they don't need to uh, hustle around uh, like sharing the private keys or uh, sharing the user account or credentials. And those are what uh, we are going. We, we want to solve as uh, providing Monaca as a platform. So, uh, what is Monaca is that we have a whole set of development experience packed in a cloud. Um, you can of course use your local editor like VS Code or Eclipse, uh, but still we also provide a browser-based development environment so that you can just uh, log into Monaca via on online and you can just coding. Uh, HTML5, and you can just pack it, package it as iOS and Android applications. 
and we ha we have capability to debug in an actual device in cross-platform way, um, and of and further on that, uh, we have a build service and also a deployment service to the stores. So some of the features that Monica provides is uh, what we call Monica Debugger, which is a debugger service that uh, that runs across your uh, mobile devices and instantly synchronized from uh, from the from Monica Cloud, which holds the source code of it. Or we have a feature called Remote Build, uh, which uh, which uh, provides a the remote build of iOS and Android application, and also Windows uh, through cloud, so that you don't need to keep your local SDK uh, fresh, uh, just in order to do some remote build. Or we have an engine called Code Encryption Engine, because hybrid applications, including React Native and Cordova, uh, needs to, the source code needs to be encrypted, because the source code will be just uh, attached to APK you know, an Android package, and so that the user can just you know unzip, because the APK package is just a zip archive, so you can just ar unarchive it, and you can just see the source code um, flawlessly. So we need some way to protect the source code. So we 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 providing code code encryption engine, so that uh, whenever the when the hacker is trying to uh, unveil the source code, they can't because it's code encrypted. Or we provide a way to update the application on the fly without uh, uh, resubmitting to the app stores, and that's called in-app updater. And we have a management portal so that um, the the administrator can manage the developer seat and the iOS credentials. And well, there's uh, many the, the continuous integration features. And uh, recently, we've we've integrated with uh, Sony DNA security checker so that you can uh, do some Cordova security assessment uh, online using uh, using Sony DNA security engine. And we provide local and offline IDs, and you can just go back and forth between those two IDs. So uh, professional developers can uh, use their own local environment, but uh, once it's uploaded to the cloud, uh, the, maybe the, the designers can just use Cloud ID to just uh, do some little change to the UI design. And those are super helpful for uh, accelerating the develop, uh, development uh, iterations. So this is my last slide, actually. <laughs> so, uh, so because Onsen UI was SPA, single page applications worldwide, we, we named it Monica. So I think you're familiar with uh, Monica, right? Uh, the Japanese snack, uh, Monaka. Uh, and as this shape you know, looks like, I think if you glance this so much, I think you start to see this as an application icon. And then what I want to say is that so for Monaka, this stuff here, uh, usually this is red beans, uh, anko, right? Uh, this is uh, uh, vanilla ice, so this is ice cream. But uh, So your stuff will be in inside here and we wrap in a shell. Uh, so, so, so this can be distributed to app stores. So this, this is how we named Monaka. Um, your source code will be shrinked and wrapped in a, in a, in a, in a sweet shell and ready for the distribution. So, so that's Monaka. So uh, this is uh, so. Thank you very much for listening to my slides. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And if you're uh, interested, uh, please uh, visit our Onsen UI repository. Uh, and and moreover, more than that, I would like I would really like you to uh, send some send us feedbacks how you like how how you use Onsen UI or how you like it or how where you are not like it, uh, where we need to be improved, and of course together with Monica. So thank you very much. Uh, where to go next? So uh, uh, please uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And uh, the next session is from Marcus. So please um, keep uh, keep keep you know keep hearing you know ready for his session. Thank you very much.